Hi, in this video I'm going to look at cyclic splitting patterns and I'm going to go through a question 4 from the OCR uh, practice booklet that they send out. So, commonly, uh, well it's extremely difficult to look at the splitting pattern of aromatics and often cyclic compounds and go, oh this is going to be this is going to be this. cyclic a bit easier than the aromatic. But uh, if we go through carbon NMR first, so not necessarily splitting, but we'll start to see the different environments in carbon NMR. When we've got a benzene ring with two bonds attached. So I get the three different positions that it can form. And it's worth looking at the different environments that can develop because of this. Now, I'm going to assume that it's both methyl groups attached. If it, if these are different groups, then it changes it slightly. But no, I'm just going to go through if they're both methyl groups and look at the different environments. So in our power position, our one four position, we've got here this environment here, which I'm going to call one is identical to this environment here. They're both bonded to exactly the same thing. You've got a mirror image of each other. If you draw a plane straight across the middle, they'll be identical on either side. Then, here, which I'm going to call environment two, is identical to this environment on the other side. They're bonded to exactly the same thing. First bond to a carbon with a CH3 on, carbon with a CH3 on, and then they both go to CH, to a CH, back to a carbon with a CH3 on. So whichever way around you go, they're identical. And actually, when we go opposite, they're the same as well. So in a 1,4 carbon NMR, just for the benzene ring, obviously if these are CH3 groups, they'll be another environment as well you'll get two environments from the carbons on the benzene ring if they're identical. Obviously if they're different it changes slightly. If we have a look at 1,3 these environments again are going to be identical so we'll call those 1 and 1. This is going to be unique there's nothing similar to this these two environments are the same, and then we've got a fourth environment here. So in one three, we'll get four environments. There's a mirror plane going across here, straight down the center from four to two, I've drawn on there. So these are identical on either side. Then in one two, we've got these two environments are the same. These two environments are then the same. And then these two environments are then the same as well. So in 1, 2, we'll have three environments. So often, you can look at the number of environments you have in using carbon NMR to identify where what type of bonding occurs around the benzene ring. Now in question four from the data sheet, it's a similar type of question, but not quite, because it looks at proton NMR specifically, but I've, uh, it should be attached below a copy of this. So we've got three isomers below, they're all members of a family of compounds called dioxanes. So one three dioxane, one four dioxane, and one two dioxane. And it gives us the proton NMR spectrum, first of all, of one four dioxane. So let's look at all the different environments in 1,4 dioxane. So this is proton NMR. So we're looking for hydrogens. So in this, we've got two hydrogens here, two hydrogens here, two here, and two here. And the question asks us, why does the spectrum consist of just one peak? 
that is not split. So if it's only got one peak, it must only have one environment. You should see that this environment is identical to this one because they've both got, if we go, they've got two hydrogens in the environment and then the carbon's connected to an oxygen this way and a CH2 this way. This has got two hydrogens, one of the bonds to an oxygen and then a CH2 this way. So they're identical. Then this environment is attached to a CH2 that way and an oxygen that way and two hydrogens. So that's the same as well. And this CH2 is attached to a CH2 one way and an oxygen the other way. So that's identical as well. So they are all in the same environment. So in your proton NMR spectrum of 1,4-dioxane, all the hydrogens are in the same environment. So if they're in the same environment, there's no adjacent uh, environments, so you don't get any splitting either. Two looks at one free, oh, part B, sorry, it looks at one free dioxane and gives us the NMR uh, splitting pattern. Possibly best drawing on this now. So B, we've got here a singlet at about 4.7, a triplet at 3.8, and then down here a a quintet, five peaks at 1.7. So in this we're going to identify the different protons. So if we look at our one free dioxane, this is going to have an environment here. So I'm going to call that one for now. These two environments, straight off the oxygen and straight off the oxygen here, they are going to be the same environment. They're identical. And then this final carbon here is going to be unique. Nothing else is bonded to a CH2 one way and a CH2 the other way. So that's got to be unique. This one's unique because nothing else is bonded to an oxygen either way. And then these two are unique because, oh, uh, sorry, are the same because they've both got an oxygen one way, CH2 the other. Oxygen one way, CH2 the other. So, trying to match up these environments now. First of all, the singlet. So the singlet is one with no adjacent hydrogens. And so that must be our environment one. Because it's got an oxygen that way, an oxygen that way. So no adjacent hydrogens with that one. These two and three each have adjacent hydrogens. So this is going to be environment one. Now, environment two has got... No adjacent hydrogens that way because the oxygen blocks, and then two this way. So environment two must have a triplet splitting pattern. You see here environment two here, two hydrogens that way, nothing that way because the oxygen. So again, it must be this triplet here, must be environment two. And then environment three has got two hydrogens this way, two hydrogens adjacent that way, so four in total. So it'll be a quintet, so it must be environment free there. And then in part C, we've got our 1,2-dioxane and this fantastic splitting patterns we've got here going on. So quite complicated, but if we go through them and look, difficult to tell what kind of splitting we've got here, but really we can do this by looking at the chemical shifts. So chemical shift here, 3.6, chemical shift here, 1.5. Splitting pattern, really difficult to tell. I've got a triple. Yeah, really tough splitting pattern to interpret. This often happens in cyclic compounds, that you get splitting on splitting, and it gets difficult to see. So we've got two environments in 1,2-dioxane. We've got environment 1, and we've got environment two, where we've got two different hydrogen environments in environment one, we have the same hydrogen environment but on different carbons, and then here these two are going to be identical as well, bonded all to the, exactly the same things. Essentially 
I'll just mark on. I'll do it in green. We've got a mirror plane running down here. So if we've got a mirror plane, everything on either side is going to be identical. So looking at the chemical shifts, a 3.6 is going to be a hydrogen on a carbon that's then bonded to an oxygen. 1.5 is just going to be a hydrogen on a carbon that's bonded to an R group. So it does tell us R consists of two triplets, although it's very difficult to see that they're two triplets. But we can identify then that environment 1 is going to be this 3.6 and this environment at 1.5 is going to be environment 2 because environment 1 has got a single bond to an oxygen. Uh, explain why the spectrum consists of two triplets. I've got, if I draw out just environment 1 and 2, I'm going to have two hydrogens on each. So adjacent to environment 1 is going to be a two hydrogens and that forms a triplet and adjacent to environment two, two hydrogens and that forms a triplet. This way there are two adjacent hydrogens but they're in the same identical environment. That's environment two. Terrible drawing. But they'll form triplets because adjacent to them there are two hydrogens.